There we go. So welcome, everyone. I'm going to do something different like these intros because we have to change it up a little bit. So anyways, we're here with Chef Amy from Forward Foods. And thank you so much, Amy, for today's show. We're going to be talking plant-based. It's what you guys, this, you're the plant-based chef of Canada is what I'm titling you now as. <laughs> you like that? I'll take it. I'll take it. You'll take that title? I'll I love it. Title. Yeah. Well, I think it is. I honestly, what you do with us on these shows always blows my mind. You're probably the smartest plant-based chef also in Canada. So anyways, what are we doing, Chef Amy? What are we going to do today? Thank you for thank you for that. That was nice. And that intro just got oh, me moving. Wait was... a second. You're also a birthday. Today it's too. my birthday today. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> yes, happy birthday to you. You're going to have plant-based cake. Yes, we're going to make a cake today. Yeah, and I I wanted nothing more for my birthday than to, sp to spend it with you, Jay, today. So. There you go. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so today we're going to be talking, we're going to be making a cake. Um, but um, overall, in general, we'll be speaking a little bit about plant-based uh, recipe development. Um, because, yeah, if we're, if you're working in large quantity kitchens or, you know, different food operations, you want to, you know, vamp up your menu every year or every season right and so uh, recipe development is a huge component of um, of your facilities um, so yeah we'll talk a little bit about that and then I'll get into two of my absolute favorite recipes one of them is my favorite cake I make it for every occasion okay my birthday <laughs> every occasion all the time yeah well every day is an occasion <laughs> yeah so we'll be doing that, and then uh, and then I'll sh I'll show you how to build a satisfying plant-based um, uh, bowl because there's lots of bowls out there, but sometimes won't won't they fail and they're not super satisfying. And they leave you, you know what? It's funny because you know I had a bowl show a couple of weeks ago with Unilever with the friends over there that you know that we've had on the show with you, and th they were teaching us about bowl. So we'll see if you hit the bowl. We'll see Correct. if we match. Yeah. Yeah. If you match the bowl, the bowl school. <laughs> right? Love it. Love it. Yeah. So that's what that's what you're in store for today. Awesome. So we'll be right back, folks, with the Plant Based Chef of Canada. 40 <laughs> years old. Ooh, I'm supposed to say your age. I'm, I'm 40. You can tell. Here we go. We're for, we're for, well, you don't look it. So <laughs> here we go. We'll be right back after this. Hey there, Jeffrey Root. Culinary Innovation for Pasta Montana. Want to show you real quick a fantastic new pasta dish that you can serve. Center the plate, get you great revenue. I have fire roasted pepper. Back, folks, with the plant based chef of Canada. I had to change it because the pasta commercial didn't work. So I apologize for that. Okay. Yeah. Half for life. Two for one. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, the napkin was pretty cool, anyway. So it was. Anyways. And I'll be eating some plant based wings later on today. That's my one of my requests for my B day. <laughs> really? Nice. Well, it's a cheat day. Is that cheat day? You know what? As long as you're eating a well balanced diet every day, it can be a cheat day. <laughs> We have a, now, I have a question for you because you're also just there's a thousand questions I always ask you. Can you have a, a cheat day or a cheat item? What, what do you recommend? You know what? As I said, as long as you're eating a well balanced diet and you're focusing on yep. like whole foods, so the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds, the legumes, the whole grains, and the good quality protein, mostly plants. Honestly, sneaking a snack or a treat in there every day, I recommend just because it's more sustainable. Really? Not feeling like, um, you know, I hate to do the like good versus bad food. It's more like um, nourishing versus 
less nourishing kind of thing. So like when I'm giving my kids a snack plate, I'll throw some Skittles on there with carrots and like, you know, crackers and cheese and stuff and, and they love it and they'll just eat everything. Okay, Amy, first of all, you just made my day. Because okay? <laughs> I, I thought you can only do, you can only do like, Cheat day, cheat items, nope. not cheat days. Or now you're telling me I could cheat every day? Yeah, just as long as it's not every day, all day. <laughs> no, 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 no. no I, had a, I, I, had a, I had a cookie. I had a cookie yesterday, so I was like, oh no! And now I'm ruining my day. No, you're you not. You are not cookie. ruining your day. You can eat cookies every day and still be okay. Oh, well, like that's fascinating right now. You just. <laughs> like, Awesome. Which we're gonna make some delicious, okay. delicious cake. But I first, I want to talk a little bit, if you don't mind, talk a little bit about no, no. recipe development. Um, yes. So, when we are developing plant-based recipes, very similar to regular recipe development, but of course the focus is on um, is on plant-based ingredients. So, uh, of course, you're starting with whole plant-based ingredients, like I listed off before. You know, the the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds, the legumes, the whole grains, and the good quality plant-based protein. Starting with those. Um, then, of course, you want to incorporate seasonality. So, um, obviously, strawberries are coming soon. And so, uh, asparagus, I've been seeing some Ontario asparagus out as well. Um, so, just think about, you know, what's uh, affordable and seasonal for your particular establishment. And then the type of cuisine. So, what, what are you wanting to showcase? Uh, obviously, knowing your clientele is super important. Um, you know, for me, I always I always tend to lean towards the like super stodgy comfort foods, the stick to your ribs, super satisfying stuff. Um, and, and oftentimes you'll see that that's, you know, that's the more popular dishes. And those don't necessarily have to be, as we were just talking about, cheap foods, but they can, they can also be good yeah. for you as well. Um, and then, uh, of course, I always look at it from a, uh, like a nutrition perspective as well. So foods that you may want to nutritionally highlight if there's a particular thing. Today I've got some amazing products that I'm going to be using. Um, one in particular is from a, a local company that I love. Just going to give them a teeny little plug here. Floating Leaf and I'm going to be using their uh, golden quinoa today. So that's the package. Okay. So, I gotta, so you know what's awesome about this too, Amy? Is I, know, I know a little bit about Floating Leaf. Yeah. I've worked with them quite a while. And uh, Canadian company out of Winnipeg, they harvest those beautiful rices from northern Manitoba and Saskatchewan. It's, you know, it's a family-owned company. Outstanding. And so beautiful. So beautiful. The, the, I'm using the golden quinoa today, but they also have a, a wild rice blend that I'm super pumped to try. And then um, some organic farro. So whole grains, really important to consume. Um, high levels of protein, particularly in the quinoa. Quinoa is a complete protein. Um, but of course, you're getting all the goodies, the fiber, the B vitamins, the antioxidants. They're a prebiotic. There's just endless. Um, hey, I have a question, a question. Question time. Yeah. Question interruption time. <laughs> um, what if they're high in carbs? That's cool. Is that okay? Okay. You're, you're making my day again. Yeah. Well, I'm the. I haven't been eating carbs now for about a month. I feel much better, right? Get the bloating of the the tummy is getting smaller. Um, all those things are happening. Now, can I eat that like stuff like that quinoa and things that have high carbs? Will that affect? Because because when I look at the carb, it's either sugar or fiber, and I see the sugar is high. I usually don't even think about it. Right. But okay. I see the fiber higher. Is that okay? Yeah, if it's high fiber, that's great. Usually, you'll you'll take the the fiber away from the sugar. You'll subtract it, and yeah. then that, that'll leave you with the the um, kind of correct amount, so to speak. But if you're focusing on whole grains, and again, if you're looking at you know Canada's food guide and Canada's food plate, essentially, yeah. um, a quarter of the plate is whole grains. So whatever that may be to you, um, whatever you you like, you can you can. Um, incorporate but yeah half the plate we're focusing on fruits and veggies so get yeah. those into you as much as possible and then the other quarter of the plate is um is protein and again canada um uh, canada's food guide recommends that it's mostly plants yeah, yeah. so don't and be that, afraid of that, that, that changed a lot right with the new one that changed quite a bit right yeah now. and it's based on evidence <laughs> and it's you know there's no industry influence which is super important um, yeah, it's, it's, we're, I'm, I'm most, um, nutrition profess for professionals. We're very happy with the, with the new, or are very happy with the new, new food guide. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So 
focus on the foods that you wish to nutritionally highlight. And so today we're going to be using the, the floating leaf quinoa, which is awesome. And then um, we talked about this last month, but where is the flavor coming from? So we want to season mindfully and use things like herbs and spices. So check back on the, the, the episode from last week as we go into great detail about how to make things flavorful. And then obviously keeping textures in mind. So having, uh, particularly when we're talking about the bowls today, you want to make sure that there's a variety of different um, textures that are present uh, and then make it beautiful. Uh, and it's easy to do that when you're using plant-based foods because they are, there's so many colors, right? It's just, yeah, the options are endless. <laughs> well, I always say that now here's a, here, I'm going to get, in, sorry, Amy, I'm interrupting. No, you. I just love doing shows with you because there's like, you're, I'm asking an expert. And uh, so here's the thing also I, I love about plant-based foods is because, you know, most people are taking pictures of their plates in restaurants before they eat them. Saw this past week when I was in Toronto that that, that hasn't changed. Yeah. So that's okay. I love it. I love it. You know what? We need that. Plant-based foods are a heck of a lot prettier than the other stuff. Like it's it just, true. it's not their fault. They just are prettier. Right. And, and pretty stuff looks good on camera and it helps sell. <laughs> Bright, right. beautiful, colorful, and it obviously looks nice, but it's also really great for you too. Like anything that's super colorful means that there's high levels of antioxidants, which reduces inflammation in the body, which reduces your risk of um, chronic disease, right? So, you know, it's a win-win-win situation. Okay, I have one more question before we get into this. Yeah, uh, potatoes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about potatoes because I see potatoes in a lot of stuff and What's with the potatoes? Are they good? Should we yeah. eat them? Should we not eat? There's tons of sugar in potatoes, right? I, you should eat potatoes. Potatoes are amazing. Again, yep. it's not something you're going to eat every day, all day, but um, for sure, it's a it's a good a, a good a good vegetable, carbohydrate rich, of course. Um, but it's what you do with the potatoes that that makes the difference, right? If you're you're frying them, again, still consume French fries. Like um, I love French fries, but again, you're not eating it all day every day. Um, but baking them obviously is a better option. Um, they're super high in potassium fiber. Um, and then just making sure that you're pairing it with other things. So, you know, uh, for example, the other day I made, uh, my family a poutine using like purple potato, all the colors of the potatoes, uh, okay. mixed it in with some other things like beets and, um, and carrots, and then made like a nice mushroom gravy, made sure I put some protein in there so that your blood sugar level okay. stay even Steven, but just, it depends on what you're pairing it with, right? If you're just eating potatoes, all day, every day. That's not great, right? You need to incorporate other things as well. You know what? Like since I started dropping carbs, um, like sugars and carbs and stuff like that, and I've tried so hard. It is so hard. Like it is not like they say on TikTok. I'll tell you that first of all. But it is so hard to find food that has low – like I'm blown away at the carbs on how much carbs are sitting in, in foods. Like in high sugar – like it's insane. It's in yeah. everything. It's hard to find sugars, them. particularly added sugars. That's where you really yeah. want to be careful, right? And um, they sneak into everything. They're in everything. They They're in everything. Like it's insane. Like just looking for different things. Now, are so here? I have one more question. Sorry. I love it, that, no, like, never okay, apologize. Sure. Uh, I have another question. So, low carbs but high fat mm -hmm. in the in the meal or food is that okay? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody high fat. is different. Butter's okay. Like yeah, butter again, is okay with high fat. It's not something uh, we're going to be eating all day, every day in large amounts. Um, but yeah, a little here and there is totally fine. And if it makes you feel satiated uh, and you know it keeps you fuller for longer, guess what? It's a, it's sustainable, right? As opposed to um, restricting, 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 restricting. Um, and then, you know, losing control, so to speak. Right. It's, it's, it's just trying to find a more sustainable diet is what that works best for you is, is what you really want to focus on. Yeah. And do you like, I find I'm, I don't get the three o'clock down time anymore. You know, those things where you have to go have a little, little cookie yeah. those, that doesn't happen anymore. I don't get that. I'm not, I have like extra super duper energy now, uh, sleeping, not as different yet. I think that will come. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I have seen a major change That's amazing. In dropping all of it. Like it, it's in it, but it is hard yeah. and you do. And I have to say, and I don't know if everyone's ever done this before, but you do get the carb grapes yeah. and you get the most bizarre. Why do you get that? Like, why is that happening? 
Your, well, first and foremost, your brain needs glucose, right? And where do we get our glucose from? Carbohydrates. So, you know, it's fuel. It's our it's our gas for our car, right? And if we have excessive amounts, then that's when it gets stored uh, places for a rainy day that never comes, right? Um, yeah. uh, so that's, you know, oftentimes, particularly when you're using your brain a lot or if you're using your body a lot, those carbohydrate uh, cravings will kick in. Okay, so that's why I haven't had too many of my guests. <laughs> well, right, speaking of you. carbohydrates. Thanks. Thank I'll, I'll leave you to go cook. Here we go. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we'll turn over to my kitchen cam, and I'm going to make this is my all time favorite cake recipe. So it's um uh, a strawberry uh, in the book. It's in my book, the, the, the Long Table Cookbook, Plant Based Re Recipes for Optimal Health. And I use hazelnuts in the book. Today I'm using walnuts because they're my favorite, and it's my birthday, so I can do what I want. Um, <laughs> Uh, so a strawberry walnut streusel uh, cupcakes with whipped cream. So we're going to be using Danon, Danon's um, silk whip, whipping cream today, which I'm super excited to try. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, we've got all the ingredients laid out here. So I'm using a whole grain spelt. You can see here. And hey, then whoa, 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 wait, wait, what's up? Okay, you got Sorry, I'm interrupting again. What is that? Whole grain sprout? Spelt, spelt, spelt. It's spelt. spelt flour. Yeah, you could use regular all-purpose flour or just whole wheat flour, whatever flour you like. I like I like spelt. I find it's like the gateway flour to whole grains. <laughs> what is it though? Is it just a different grain? Like yeah, it's an ancient grain. Yep. Okay. Different cool. type of grain. It does contain gluten. It's got a little bit less gluten in it. It's uh, easier on your digestive tract um, than say whole grain. Nice. Whole grain flour. Yeah. And then I'm adding some ground flax in that will help with binding. It also increases your omega-3 fatty acids, which is great. And then you add in some cinnamon. So we have the recipes for you on the Friends of HSI website. So this recipe is present. Um, so if you're wanting to make it at home, you can do so. A um, little bit of cinnamon. So that's a, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Then I'm adding some baking powder, teaspoon and a half of that and then half a, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And then we're just, it's the straight up, mix all the dry together, mix all the wet together, then add the wet to the dry. Okay, so that's what we've done here. We've got the dry. Ba bam Now we will do the wet. Okay, so. I've got a quarter of a cup of water in here. You could use soy milk if you wanted to, or some plant-based milk as well. If you wanted to give it a little bit more, coconut milk would work really well. Give it a little bit more decadence. Um, I'm just using good old fashioned water. Putting some grapeseed oil in there, about a quarter of a cup. Then I'm adding um, some uh, applesauce, a quarter of a cup. You could use any pureed fruit here. If you wanted to, you could use a banana. Okay, and it doesn't matter. No. How bad are apples okay for you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I know, I know that. But, but once again, there's some carbs added to them. Sure. Right? And you know what? I like to do one of my favorite snacks with apples. Like I find if I just eat an apple, I'm not satisfied for very long. Like I love apples, but um, I may be, might be hungry like a half hour, an hour later. So what I'll do is I'll cut them up and then just drizzle like nut butter on it. So like almond butter and then sprinkle some cinnamon um, and, uh, and then, I feel much, I, I, I feel, I stay fuller for longer. You know what? I've, I, I've seen a lot of people putting more and more apples in air fryers. Does, does that change a lot of the nutritional value? Of it? No, you know what? No, it's still, it's still very high in fiber. It changes the water content. Um, the only thing that's really hindered when you're cooking in like fruits and vegetables is vitamin C. Um, but if you're eating, you know, vitamin C is super easy to get, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. Air fried, air fried apple chips. That sounds amazing. I would eat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The chef, chef Michael made some the other day here and he um, cut them. So they, uh, were like a waffle and they're so good. So that good. Sounds amazing. I will check that out. There you go. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to add so a little bit. Questions. <laughs> I love it. I love the questions. It's great. I feel like I'm in, in one of my classes. Answer okay. Them answering all my students questions okay and then i'm going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar um and this helps with um oh, maybe just in just a second what's up we have so many questions about apple cider vinegar <laughs> i really do um, first of all 
Is it really that good for you? Um, you know what? It's I think it's got uh it's got a health halo that doesn't necessarily um I wouldn't say deserve. Like all vinegars are great to consume. Um, yeah. you know, they add additional flavor. Um Apple cider vinegar generally is fermented. You can see if you get, particularly if you get the ones that have like the mother at the bottom, you'll see it looks like just kind of a little bit, looks like a bit of scum at the bottom of it almost, but it's, um, yeah. yeah, the fermentation process, it's great. It's great for that, for that reason. Um, in, in this particular instance, it's helping with, um, helping with making the cake a little bit more moist and helping with it, um, uh, to bind, but also to make it a little bit fluffy because it interacts with the baking soda. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend chugging it or taking straight tablespoons of it or shots of it. It's acidic. It can burn your throat. That's something that, you know, you know, some of the nutrition, um, yeah. bloggers will, will post. I wouldn't recommend that if you want to add it to your like water, or if you like the taste of it, do that. But it's not something that you need to be like taking tablespoons of in the morning and at night. Um, you know, the research isn't there in terms of, um, you know, there's so many claims made in terms of, di you know, it helps with digestion and so yeah, yeah, like yeah, take, yeah. To take it an hour before you eat. It's supposed to help with that. You know, there's, there's not, maybe it might, but there isn't um, research that necessarily. There you go. There, you just saved me from doing the shot of it every morning. Add it to your dressings. I throw yeah, it, you know, so there's, it's, it's yummy, but you don't necessarily have to drink it like it's water, right? I was having a shot of it every morning. And it's tough to. Yeah, that will, it can uh, burn your esophagus, right? And not, it makes you almost want to. It almost makes you want to bring stuff up. It's yeah, just, <laughs> which you know. defeats the purpose. Yeah, so just add it into your dressing. You can add it to your water if you want, if you like the taste of it. Um, what about you can add it to other drinks? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Amy, Amy, before today, sometime. We have to talk about mushrooms and yeah. coffee. Oh, and mushroom yeah. coffee. I moved to mushroom coffee the other day, and I do feel there's a benefit. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, mush mushrooms are great, and there's still, you know, there's still research to be done, but they are rich in um, antioxidants, beta-glucans, um, all sorts of wonderful things, all sorts of wonderful things. And I think I've mentioned them before, but they're a good component, good component of an anti-inflammatory diet, but uh, an anti-cancer diet in particular. So I've just mixed the wet... And now I'm mixing the wet to the dry, easy peasy. And then I'm going to add in some dates. So dates, super high in fiber, but also add like a nice sweetness. And you can see kind of how the apple cider has reacted with the baking soda already. Yeah. You don't want to let this sit too long because you want to get them in the oven. Okay, add about a, a third of a cup of dates. And then I'm going to add some walnuts. And then we'll mix that together. And I'm just going to dice a few strawberries and put those in too. You don't have to put them in at this point. Um, you could just use them for garnish. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people don't enjoy cooked fruit. But I do. And again... It's my birthday, so I can do what I want. Can you use, if you had to, you could use frozen? Yes, for sure. Yep, 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 yep. So that's going to save on cost as well, right? Yeah, I was going to say cost right now. The inflation on food is just insane. Yeah. Blueberries would be a good one. They tend to be a little yeah. bit more cost effective. Blueberries? Blueberries. Than strawberries in particular. For okay. But um, yeah, whatever works, whatever you happen to have on hand, this works with any fruit. Or you could just exclude it and use fruit as like kind of like the nice garnish that goes on top. But yeah, if you're using nuts too, particularly hazelnuts, hazelnuts are really expensive. So like that would be something that you wouldn't want to necessarily use in a large operation. But if it was like a specialty item or a specialty dinner, then maybe you'd want to use that. But you could use you can use seeds as well, especially if your facility is not uh, it has to be nut free, right? So many wonderful things you can use in lieu. This the great thing about this recipe, and I'm obviously biased, but <laughs> is you can make uh, substitutions for for lots of different ingredients, so it's versatile. Okay, the strawberries in.
And they're going to uh, release a little bit of water. So it's nice that the dates are in there. It'll absorb some of it. Okay, great. Ba bam Done. Now we're going to scoop it into, and so you could make this uh, into cake form if you wanted to. Okay. I'm going to do just like little cupcakes. So I've got yep. a quarter of a cup measurement. I, okay, first of all, that's the wickedest cup ever. <laughs> it just you know makes it, it makes perfect. It makes it perfect. It's so great. And it's so old. This is my mom's from, I don't, probably before I was born. <laughs> um, but yeah, get a scooper that, that you can do this with. Like the ice cream scoops are obviously great for these purposes. You all know you're professionals. Yeah. It just, yeah. It just makes it perfect. It wow. does. And uh, making sure, obviously, that your um, your muffin tin is greased beforehand. And I'm ju I just use coconut oil. I find it's nice. Adds a little buttery kind of flavor to the exterior of the muffins. I think you can get coconut oil in spray now. In spray. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely can. There's so, oh, my gosh. There's so many great products out there these days. I know. It's, it's really getting better and better. Eh? It's really yeah. cool. It's amazing. Okay. So these guys, I've preheated the oven to uh, 350. Yep. And we're going to put these guys in the oven for um, for about 20 minutes. While we're doing that, I'm going to make the um, the whipped topping that's going to go on top of that. And uh, which, is, which is silk and silk like Danon made is, is is it's from Danon which has silk, and their products are like outstanding. Like look yeah. like, and this is all plant based. Yeah, the silk, um, there's the sick, like this is great. This this is super tasty, very flavorful, super decadent. I can't wait to try uh, try it with the with the cake today. I also honestly love their um, love their soy milk, their unsweetened soy milk. That's what we drink in our house every day. It's it's really creamy, it's rich. Soy milk, as as I've discussed before, is a complete protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids that our body requires, um, and it just tastes great. So, and we use the same. We use the same. Yeah, it's amazing. They're great. There's so many out there, but um, the unsweetened uh, soy is my favorite. Okay, these are going in the oven. Put a little timer on. And in the meantime, we're going to whip the whipping cream here. So I've got the whipping cream. All right, let's go to the. You want to? You want to see the area? Yeah, let's yeah. <laughs> Okay, it looks like whipping cream. It looks like cream. Yeah, doesn't it? It really does. Mm -hmm. Does it smell different or anything? It, it doesn't, you know, I would think it would have a very coconutty smell, but it doesn't. It does? It's very it does. neutral. So for those people who are not into the coconut, I think this would still work really well. Okay, and then I just got, because obviously I'm a Canadian gal, uh, maple syrup, and then a little bit of vanilla. So you could leave the vanilla extract out if obviously um, we're worried about cost there. It would still be amazing. And you could use whatever you happen to have in terms of a sweetener for this. And then we're going to wait. Yeah, and you told us, you told us that's okay, right? Yeah. Yep. Let's flush out. <laughs> so we're going to whip this up. So I think maybe while I'm whipping it up, do you want to go so you don't have to hear all the... Yes, yes we're going to go a quick commercial, folks, yeah. while Amy whips up the plant paste. Whip. Amazing. Whip, and we'll come back and hopefully it's fluffy. Uh, please whip cream. So we're, we'll be right back after this. Thank you. Cisco is Canada's leading restaurant supplier with more than 14 locations across the country, servicing every province and territory. We are grateful for our partnerships and proud to service our customers from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, BC. With the most distribution sites in Canada, we are recognized for our national reach and local connection. Cisco services every community size, from every major city to every small town. We are relentlessly innovating to ensure you have the products and services you need, no matter your location, with a coverage area that's continuously expanding. A partnership with Cisco guarantees access to the industry's best distribution network, keeping you on trend and stocked with fresh products and fresh ideas. 
Cisco Canada provides a broad range of food and non-food products to both independent and chain restaurant customers and other away from home locations such as healthcare and educational facilities. No matter your cuisine type or culinary capabilities, we can help. Our products are sourced locally in Canada and within our specialized global network of responsible suppliers. Our categories include meat and poultry, seafood, dairy, produce, bakery and desserts, food service supplies, beverages, specialty and world food products, and pantry staples. Locally focused, our regional teams provide the hands-on customer service that sets us apart, ensuring you have what you need when you need it. Visit cisco.ca to learn more. Cisco is Canada's leading restaurant supplier with more than 14 locations across the country, servicing every province and territory. We are grateful for our partnerships and proud to service our customers from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, BC. With the most distribution sites in Canada, we are recognized for our national reach and local connection. Cisco services every community size, from every major city to every small town. We are relentlessly innovating to ensure you have the products and services you need, no matter your location, with a coverage area that's continuously expanding. A partnership with Cisco guarantees access to the industry's best distribution network, keeping you on trend and stocked with fresh products and fresh ideas. Cisco Canada provides a broad range of food and non-food products to both independent and chain restaurant customers and other away from home locations such as healthcare and educational facilities. No matter your cuisine type or culinary capabilities, we can help. Our products are sourced locally in Canada and within our specialized global network of responsible suppliers. Our categories include meat and poultry, seafood, dairy, produce, bakery and desserts, food service supplies, beverages, specialty and world food products, and pantry staples. Locally focused, our regional teams provide the hands-on customer service that sets us apart, ensuring you have what you need when you need it. Visit cisco.ca to learn more. Awesome. We're back with Amy. Amy, I hit that button twice. We had a double commercial. Woohoo! Again, two for one. I love it. It's just because it's your birthday. We did it twice. Oh, that's really thoughtful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the whipped cream. It worked out really well. Check that out. Okay, if you don't put your finger in there and taste it, I'm going to be mad. Obviously, I did. I did. I did earlier. I, <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> you weren't looking. It's yeah. so good. Yep, super creamy. I didn't put too much sweetener in it because I don't like it too sweet, but it's yeah. so delicious. Creamy. Like, yeah, it's, it's whipped cream. Great replacement. I'm still pumped about this product. Okay. So there we go. And then uh, we're going to set this stuff aside. And uh, we're going to jump into the, uh, the the how to make a satisfying uh, vegan bowl. Um, a vegan bowl, okay? You know, if you if you if you're wrong, I'm going to call you out. Ah, please do. You yeah, you you've been you've been, been well educated coached. previously by our pals at Unilever. Unilever. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so first and foremost, when we're talking about. Um, so I've already made a faux pas and I can tell you that my friends, my colleagues at HSI Canada will say, Amy, we don't call them vegan bowls. And that's the first error uh, is when we're, you know, when, when you're promoting plant-based cuisine, it's, it's uh, ideal not to label it as such. Cause sometimes people feel like they're missing out. You know, there's things that are missing in it instead, just come up with a really mouthwatering, wonderful name that are, you know, are going to make everyone want to want to buy it. Um, so again, taking into consideration seasonality, I'm going to be using uh, roasted asparagus. And mm -hmm. um, because again, it's my birthday, I made my absolute favorite um, uh, smoky, crispy chickpeas. Uh, and so smoky, crispy chickpeas, how did you smoke them? Oh, I just use smoked paprika. Um, you could use, you could use liquid smoke. If you wanted to. Yeah. I love smoked paprika. It's it's a uh, it's super easy. Also adds like a nice color to uh, to the chickpeas as well. So we're making instead of a vegan bowl, <laughs> we're making a uh, a roasted asparagus and crispy chickpea uh, bowl with a lemon Dijon vinaigrette. So that's the title nice. today. Yeah, 
Um, so first and foremost, we have, if you want to turn it over to my, uh, my kitchen cam, I've got mm -hmm. some of the uh, floating leaf organic uh, golden quinoa. Cooked? Cooked, yeah. How long did it take? Uh, so I actually used, uh, I used my pressure cooker. Uh, oh. Yeah, which was great. I mean, if, or if you have a rice cooker, you can throw it in there as well, right? And you can make large Spoiler. amounts of it and it's cooked perfectly and you don't have to worry about watching it, right? So it literally took eight minutes. That's it? Yeah. Yep. There you go. And you can make it in large amounts, store it, keep it in the fridge. Um, I did toss it in a little bit of olive oil just to keep it kind of from sticking to each other. Um, and just depending on what you're going to be using it for, uh, to, you know, you can cook it a little bit longer if, say, you were making uh, burgers and you needed it to stick together a little bit better. I wanted the grains to kind of separate. You can see they right. aren't sticky. Okay, so again, quinoa, no, it's, quinoa protein. Sticky, protein. It's not sticky because quinoa can stick. Yes, it can. It's very sticky. It can act as a binder for sure. Like if you're making yeah. a burger, you could use it, um, you know, with beans and other things as well. Okay. So we were just talking about um, plant-based cuisine and trying to make things beautiful. You can see my, my platter here. I've got an array of different colorful vegetables and you could use fruits as well, varied in texture. So sliced, diced, you could use pickled, fermented, grated, whatever you want. I've got some, um, some nice micro, um, micro greens here, some basil, um, beets. Beets are great. You could pickle them uh, and they are, uh, fairly cost effective, particularly right now. Peppers, some tomatoes, cucumber, and I've got some water, watermelon radish and some regular radish. Um, all will go really nicely with the, the lemon Dijon vinaigrette. And then of course, I roasted some asparagus just with a little bit of olive oil and sea salt. And those will go into the bowl as well. And then I also, as I said, made my favorite crispy chickpeas. And these are super easy to make. You can make them in large amounts. Um, so of course, when you're making a bowl, you need to have, um, you know, a plant-based protein, your plant-based protein of choice. So in my, in this case, I'm doing the crispy chickpeas. Um, the recipe is actually present in my, in my cookbook. So you can check that out. Um, but essentially it's just oil spices. I used garlic and smoked paprika and then just baked it in the oven, 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And they're nice and crispy. You want to dry them first. Um, I used canned. Canned chickpeas. Yeah. So there you go. So that's my protein of choice. But of course, you could use oh, about canned chickpeas. Tom. Are they are they okay? Like because yeah. I, I bought them all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially if it's a matter of like um, you need something quick and on the fly, they are for sure okay. But if we're talking about from cost, like a cost perspective, buying yeah. dry is much better, right? And then you can even cook them ahead of time and store them in the freezer and thaw them when you need them. You can uh, store chickpeas in freezers after they're cooked? Yep. Yep. Especially if you're cooking right, them yeah. dry, right? And they're so much cheaper when you're using the... Um, well, so I, let's, I mean, if I could, I, I want to get into before you finish this bowl. Yeah. Uh, price because like I said earlier food inflation is very strong right now and mm -hmm. and, and they're predicting even to go up even more which I don't know how it can but <laughs> different story what I believe and I also titled this in the in the description today is that I truly believe that plant-based foods for restaurants is a is a way to generate more profit but to save money yeah I couldn't agree with you more particularly you have to be um, careful in your selection of ingredients yep. of course we're not using the overly processed, super expensive, um, you know, cheeses or, or different products. Yeah. Out there. Um, you know, again, shopping seasonally, it's, it's what you do with regular, um, you know, regular recipe development, but, uh, but things like chickpeas and then you're yeah. roasting them and making them crispy. That's adding value with not addition, not much additional cost. Right. Um, yeah. And I, I just think as more and more people move over this way, and we, we are going to see some, I think pricing, hopefully one day, on some of these things that are high when it comes to plant-based that are pre-done, but making it from scratch like you are today, the profitability in there and to offset some in food inflation and, and, and good for you and everything else. Some millennials and Gen Z love this, like everything, they're a big mover of it, big supporter of it. It looks pretty. I don't know why. And if I think I, when I was in Toronto last week, I did see it evident everywhere. Yeah. I, I, have, I even had a mother's bowl. And I won't say the place, but it was phenomenal and it had quinoa and everything else in it. But I saw, and it was like the restaurant was like absolutely insane packed. But 
there's a huge profitability in this space, most right? Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Is, you have sometimes you may not like it yourself, but you got to look at what the mass looks looks is looking for, and they're looking for this stuff. I, I tell I, you, it is everywhere. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. And we've talked about it before, but one good resource that we actually have at HSI Canada is the um, uh, the we looked at it. I think a few episodes ago, where it compares different um, animal based. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it compares it to like an alternative that you could potentially yeah. use. Uh, uh, using plant-based ingredients and, and the cost that you can potentially save. Is that on the website? It is. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the, the gonna, yeah. yeah. What I'm going to do is I'll put in the link when we repost this on YouTube and then on Facebook, we'll put it in there in the description to link to that because you got to look at it. There, there's some major savings there, right? Yeah. So. Agreed. 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 Okay. So yeah, legumes is one in particular, which we, I use all the time. Um, and this, in this case, again, using uh, using the crispy chickpea. So we'll turn over to the bowl again and I'll show you just, again, just depends on what you have in house. Um, you, maybe you have a dressing that you like already, but just think of it like what goes well with what and making sure that, you know, you've got that high protein whole grain, um, you've got a protein of choice. So again, I, I'm using crispy chickpeas, but you could use marinated tofu, tempeh, edamame, um, and then making sure you're getting a wide variety of different colored and textured veggies. Um, and then fat, fat was another big one. And I'll show you, obviously we're using a dressing that's going to be, um, containing, uh, olive oil, but avocado is another good one too. And a good way to stretch avocado, cause they tend to be a little bit more costly, is, yeah. um, uh, pureeing it with say, uh, lime juice or, or apple cider vinegar, or, you know, some sort of liquid adding some, you know, cilantro, maybe some water, olive oil, stretching it out and then using it itself as a dressing. So you're making, you're making oh. so you're stretching, you out, but you're still getting that nice health, uh, healthy, fatty mouth feel. So that's part sometimes where, um, uh, veggie bowls lack is in yeah. the, the the fat component. You need that fat, you need that mouth feel uh, to yeah. feel satisfied, right? So that's a good good component. And then of course garnish, which I've got some some nice sprouts here. Okay, so I'm gonna assemble. All right, here we go. We're gonna see if you do this right. So yeah. far you're so far you're right, by the way. So far I'm right. Oh good. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay. Um and I'm gonna chop up some uh tomatoes. Cause again, fun fact about me, Jay, I hate Grape tomatoes and cherry tomatoes, whole. Oh. <laughs> I hate them. Oh, okay. I don't know why. I can't pop. I don't like to pop them in my mouth. I hate the really? like explosion. It's not. It's not for really? me. I do love them. I love them cut up though. So there you oh, go. Oh, you know what? Cisco's got this. Uh, uh, here, you know, doing a pitch here on selling, but we have this great box the chef had from Cisco, and it has a whole bunch of different colors of those little tomatoes. Yes. The greens and oh, the colors are just gorgeous. I love it. I love it. Well, that's what we're trying to go for today here. Okay. Okay. And then some radish. Oh, uh, see, look at that. No, what's that? What's the other thing there? What's that the other watermelon one? Watermelon radish? Yeah, look at that. So beautiful. I'll get one in there. Don't worry. Yeah, that's a, that's a keeper. We, I, I've seen people put that in drinks. For real? Oh, so lovely. You can pickle these. These are so yeah. lovely. Yeah, actually, I think I might have saw those when I was in Toronto too. So uh, beautiful, and that's that's you know a local organic um, uh, farm. But again, if it's not, you know, if a little goes a long way, right? Like that, like a whole radish, mm -hmm. you could you could get like twenty pieces out of easy. And I'm just gonna dice some peppers here. Oh, we didn't even have the tunes going today. We got to put some tunes on in the background. <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm assembling the bowl. While you're assembling, we'll have tunes, assembling okay. music. Love it. There and then go. some yeah, that's, You know, the, so far you're, you're, you're bang on. Chef Kyla will, will love the fact that you're doing okay, this. Okay, right. <laughs> Love this. Okay. And then got that. We've got that. Okay, and then we need some crispy chickpeas, of course. Hey, Amy, have you ever have you ever used banana leaf? Have I ever used banana leaf? Banana leaf. You know what? I have not. That is something I would, I would love to use. Yeah, banana leaf. I mean, there's so many different ways to use banana leaf. I used to use banana leaf a lot in my dishes as a garnish oh, underneath. Beautiful. Like so, for that in a restaurant, I would then. I would put the banana leaf in first and you pile yeah. everything out to give that 
cool thing. And we used to buy it frozen, and then we used to cut it into shapes because you can cut it with scissors. Oh. And, thawed, and you used to cut, be able to cut it into like all these weird shapes and stuff. I love that. Okay, we got some avocado for some fatty milk. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would be and oh, so beautiful. I bet. Look at this. I always, I always love watching people on our show cut avocados. <laughs> Didn't you teach us the porcupine way? <laughs> I think I did that. Did I do that with the mango? I might have done that. Was it the mango? Yes, it was the mango. Is the porcupine? Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> but look at the pro. Look at that. I've never touched a mango and not had it squished into a million different ways. Really? I doubt that. I doubt that. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> That's hilarious. I like this music. Wait, wait, what do you look for in a mango or in a avocado? Uh, what do you look for? So, like when you're color, this, obviously. If you're looking for a ripe one that's yeah, ready now, right now, yeah. What's ripe? What's ripe? What color? Yeah, so it's a darker color, right? Yeah. And then the little um, stem here, you can wiggle it out and just it'll just come right out. Obviously, don't do that in the grocery store. They might not enjoy that. <laughs> but if it can wiggle then it's and then it's a little bit soft, it's yeah. good to go. Yeah. When you ripen them, like in your fridge and stuff, when you do get them and they're green like a rock? Yes. I, uh, I generally leave them out and I'll leave them with bananas or, you know, something that will help with the ripening process. And then once it gets to the point where I'm like, these are good or they you know, need to yeah. be, they might go bad in a couple of days or whatever, then I throw them in the fridge and then they keep for a while. Okay. So keep them out of the fridge. Yeah. Keep them out of the fridge. Yeah. I, I got a trivia for you that I know, cause I know it's right. I, I, back in the day. I love it. Do you know tomatoes are not supposed to be put in the fridge? I did know that. Yep. For sure. And then. I don't know. Same thing goes with me if the tomato's starting to get a little bit, a little bit on the yeah. right side, then I'll throw it in. But uh, but yeah, I would keep them out for sure. Which a lot of people did not know that tomatoes don't go in a fridge. How many coolers and restaurants have been in that they're sitting in there? And then they get so mealy and love, right? Well, I, I surprisingly, I think they also last longer outside the fridge. You might be right. Yeah. Don't quote me on that one. Okay. So we've got our bowl. And we've got about 15 seconds left before our, before I need to check on our uh, cupcakes there. But I'll do a quick little dressing here. So we've got some olive oil. So I usually just do like equal parts acid and fat for this one. Yep. And then a little splash of maple syrup, of course. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Dijon mustard. Or Dijon. Yep. Yeah. Obviously helps with the binding or the emulsifying, but um, just gives it a nice little tang and some salt. Okay. And then. What do you? What did you just do there? Lemon. I know, but why did you roll it? Oh, that's a great question. Just to get the juices flowing. <laughs> yeah, it just breaks uh, up the membranes and gets the juices going. Which is so many people don't have a clue about either. And then we're going to squirt it You're in. Full of, full of little treats today. <laughs> Aren't you glad I was born? <laughs> exactly. 40 years ago. 40, year ago. 40 years ago today. Where there, were you born? Where were you born? Uh, in in Petrolia. Australia. <laughs> the oh. oil town of Canada, of the world, I think, actually. Where? Um, Petrolia, Ontario. Whoop. Petrolia? Yeah. Where is that, north? Probably it's north. three hours south of Toronto. What? Yep. And I grew up on a small farm there, but uh, apparently I came very quickly, just like my second child. <laughs> wow. And the doctor wasn't even there, just the nurse and my mom. Wow, how ironic. <laughs> he came in, to, the doctor came in to just say hi, good work, and then left again. Okay. Really? <laughs> well done. 40, 40 years later, now you're cooking on our show. There you go. <laughs> Who would know, eh? Who would have known? Who would have thunk it? Okay. And so I've got the Dijon here. I'm going, or the Dijon vinaigrette here, and I'm going to just give it a good old whiskeroony. I put in some sea salt as well. Yeah. Very 
perfect. <laughs> Can you have too much dressing? Can you have too much dressing? No. Okay. It depends, what it, it depends what it is, though. You you know what I mean? Like, if it's uh, store-bought, then yeah, probably. But if it's um, something that you're making and you know the ingredients, right? I'm going to put probably about two tablespoons, two or three tablespoons on here. Hold it up for you. Actually, oh, don't forget about the basil. What do you do with that asparagus there? What did I do with it? What are you going to do with it? I don't know. Oh, you do all of it? I'll probably put it into a pasta. I have really nice like pesto, asparagus, and roasted tomato pasta because I've got some tomatoes. And then toss it all together with lots of garlic. No meat and uh, asparagus. Yeah, I, mean, I like that. Yeah. Thanks, Cheryl. So yeah, it's cool. perfect. Ba bam And this is, I mean, I'm biased, obviously, but satisfying. It's going to keep you fuller for longer. Um, You know, you're going to leave the the table feeling uh feeling full and uh and yeah satisfied so what do you need to do now you know what i'm gonna ask you just put the bowl by your give me a give me a picture for a moment here we go here we go here we go oh no you were smiling last time <laughs> there you go you got it Ta -da! okay i'm gonna pull out the cupcakes before we burn them Oh, they're perfect. Yay! I was taking a chance today, Jay, doing it on air. No, I was like, mm. <laughs> then you nailed it. But they work. It's great. So take a look at those babies. Ta-da! Holy cow. Good. Yep. So we're just going to plate these, and then Bob's your uncle. Thanks, two. Yeah. I sometimes say two and a half because I have an honorary Uncle Bob. All right. We had a comment here. The so Vivian here. I hope I said that right. Um, I found the avocado with a teardrop shape tends to have more fruit and a smaller seed. Is that true, Amy? Yep, I found that. I found the same experience for sure. I mean, there's different varieties of avocados out there, um, but yeah, they generally they generally do have a bit more meat to them, so to speak. <laughs> well, I think that's a really good point because. It, <laughs> they're not that inexpensive either. They're quite expensive. Yeah, that's true. It's so true. And that's why, you know, if you can stretch them in any sort of way, it's a good idea to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so. Here we go. One of these guys. So obviously you would let these rest. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to do it today, though. No resting today. No resting. No rest for the wicked. No. They should pop out because they have been greased. There we go. Mm -hmm. Bam. Do that's all right. Okay. And then um, we've got the uh, whipped cream. Now, for people in the restaurant industry, like you can buy this whipped cream from Cisco. Uh, we have this silk product here available across Canada. And I don't know, like, I think most places are just going to move over to this stuff. Yeah. Or not have an option, just move over. Yeah. At least have an, at least have an option. I don't know. I'm biased, but it tastes really, it tastes really nice. Okay. And then strawberry garnish, obviously. And then, so again, this is in my, this recipe is in my cookbook, but this is the um, kind of caramel uh, drizzle that goes on top. Okay, um, caramel it's drizzle just, on top. It's literally just dates, maple syrup, and vanilla, and it's pureed together. That's it with, the, with some water. Equal parts? Yes. Yep. I mean, you can, you can change it up if you want to, if there's something, you know, like dates tend to be a little bit. Depending on if you're not using the jewel dates, they can be a little bit more cost effective, um, yeah. which you can use. Why not use the, use the other ones? Um, why not? Then, why not? Why wouldn't you? And then obviously you're gonna just put that all over it. Hello. And then, and then here we go. And then we're gonna sprinkle some nuts on top there. 
Bam. Happy Earth Day to me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I clean up my mess. For you. Okay, and so there you have it. Two recipes. My fave cake of all time. Okay, just just. That is beautiful. The, the, yeah, the Danone whipped cream. And then my recipe, obviously, for my cookbook. Beautiful. And then, you good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that one. Sweet. Sweet. And then the, uh, the stodgy, satisfying, satiating. Done right. Roasted. <laughs> Right. Roasted asparagus and crispy chickpea bowl with a lemon Dijon vinaigrette. Awesome stuff. There you have it. There you go. There you go. Easy peasy. Once, once again, you killed it. <laughs> Thanks killed so much. The recipes. Ideas. Awesome. Thank you again for all the, sorry for all the questions. There's oh just so much stuff out there that are unknown. Um, and we can see all these recipes on your website, on the Ford Food website. And you guys just kill it all the time. And thank you so much. And Alex, thank you for all the different things. I apologize to throw it all out there because I'm having computer issues on my side. But uh, we'll make sure we put the website on there, on our YouTube and on Facebook to click, check out all these recipes and ideas. And then you also can go help restaurants if they want to help too, right? Yeah, Amy? that's great. That's another thing too. So if you've just tuned in for the first time to the show, um, Forward Food uh, is a program run by Humane Society International Canada. They're wonderful. We give all sorts of free programming to, um, you know, large food operations across Canada uh, and chefs uh, trying to get, you know, more plant-based options on the menu. So we do recipe development workshops, um, you know, in-person summits and conferences yeah. now that, you know, the world is kind of opening back up again. Uh, and the best part about our services is that it's all free. Yeah, like that's first of all, to have, like, to work with Chef Amy on your menu get new ideas and everything else it doesn't cost you anything don't go out and spend it save your money right because it's expensive out there today with a lot of different things happening in our industry take this up this amazing opportunity so thanks so much amy and oh to everyone else take these recipes are wicked i love it awesome thank you stuff. so much for having me jay it's been a delight always. so a blast back again tomorrow and we're doing more plant-based we're doing an influencer friday show tomorrow with more Danone products. I think there might be some silk stuff it looks like coming in. And uh, Chef Ellie's going to kill that as well. So, and then we're back next week. Guess what I have on the show? Who's on the show next week? Who? Is Chef Vikram from the Dragon's Den. Chef is going to drop on by. We're going to celebrate Asian Heritage Month with him. And then Margo's going to drop by from Technomics on Thursday. I think uh, Chef Vikram's Friday. Margo's, Margo's on Thursday before talking about Technomics and all the data and industry, what's happening, food inflation, everything from their perspective. We have a packed, and then it's battle, food inflation battle on Wednesday. And it's insane. And then Matt Rolf's on Tuesday. Sounds like a busy week. It is crazy week next week. We're back because we only got about five more weeks and then we wrap up season two. Oh, season three starts in oh. September. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay, we're gonna do programming and planning. Okay. So, all okay. good. But anyway, thanks so much, Chef Amy. Everyone else, tune in tomorrow and next week. Uh, we are literally the only food service live daily show in the industry out there, bringing you simple ideas and all this stuff. So, thanks so much, Amy, and everyone else. Get out there. Let me find my button here. Get out there and support the industry and uh, dine out tonight. It'd be kind of cool. Well, you know what? Have a good birthday too, Amy. Thank you. That's so kind. I will. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.